In this video, we will solve the A-Levels Chemistry Paper 5 of the series Feb March 2022, the variant question paper 5-2 and question 1. So, we will solve only question 1 of this paper in this video. Next video, we will solve the question 2. Along with this, we will also see that for paper 5, what are variables, what are the various measurements which we require to know and what is the percentage error, how to calculate the percentage error in a paper 5. 5 A levels chemistry. So here is question 1. Uh, a student has a sample of copper 2 sulfate crystals that is CuSO4.xH2 and the students want to show that the value of x is 5 here. So here the value of x with water that is hydrated salt of water is 5 and the student uses the following method. It says step 1 weigh a clean crucible on a balance reading to two decimal places and record the mass. Place the sample of copper sulfate, hydrated copper sulfate into the crucible and record the mass. Heat the crucible gently for about 1 minute then strongly for about 4 minutes and then weigh the crucible and contents and record the mass. Now you can always pause the video and always find out and read the question properly and find out what are the key words you need to take care. Now the A part of this question asks that identify the instructions that is missing between step 3 and step 4. Now let's have a look again at step 3 and step 4. What is asked is heat the crucible gently for about minute and in step 4 is a weighing of the crucible and the content now what is missing between this step 3 and step 4 is that allow the crucible to cool down allow the crucible and even if you can write allow the crucible and the content to cool down that is necessary whenever an experiment related to crucible and heating is done so uh, allow the crucible to cool down the next part b explain why gentle heating takes place in step 3 we can reread step 3 it's written that heat the crucible gently for one minute and then strongly now what are we heating have a look again that what are we heating and why do we need to heat it gently now remember here it says it's copper to sulfate crystals now if we have crystals and if we directly heat it very strongly it's going to spit into powder so the reason main reason for gentle heating is that to prevent the crystals prevent the crystals of copper sulfate from spitting why because spitting means breaking down of the crystals so spitting is breaking down of the crystals or turning it into the powder so to prevent that we need to have a gentle heating now next part c is name the apparatus that should be used to hold the cr crucible during heating now this part is important during heating what is going to hold the uh, crucible now if we are heating the crucible on a burner it's the pipe clay triangle which is going to hold the crucible on the stand above the burner flame so it's pipe clay sorry it's not a crucible it's pipe clay triangle which holds the crucible so this are the first a b c and answer now let's go ahead with the next part of the uh, question that is d says that the method is incomplete state the steps that should be carried out to complete the method now here again reread the steps what is written is heat the crucible gently and then weigh the crucible and the content and record the mass now what is incomplete here is that we need to reheat again so what we can say is that reheat the content reheat the content and cool and weigh the content or you can say the residue or crucible 
टिल कॉन्स्टेंट मास नाउ दिस पार्ट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट टिल कॉन्स्टेंट मास इज to ensure the complete evaporation of water that is xh2o part of the copper sulfate because we never know that in just one heating is all the water going to get evaporated out or not so to ensure all the water has evaporated we need to heat it till constant mass so this till constant mass is important here let's go ahead with the next part of e here it says that the student records their results in table 1.1 and here are the results which are given to us it says that mass of crucible is 13.60 gram mass of crucible plus content before the heating is 21.09 and content after the heating that is end of the experiment is 17.9 Four. Now complete the experimental value of x from these result. Now what we need to do is first calculate the mass of water lost. That is mass of water. And how do we do that? We need to subtract these two values. That what mass is lost during the heating. That is the mass of water. So if we subtract uh, twenty one point zero nine. Minus seventeen point nine four. We are going to get the answer as three point one five gram. That's the mass of the water lost. Now here, if we are finding the ratio of copper sulfate and water together. Now this is the ratio. Actually, this is copper sulfate is one mole and water with copper sulfate is x mole. So that's going to be the ratio of copper sulfate and water moles. so what is important is that first we find out the moles of copper sulfate and moles of water and find out the ratio so here we need the mass of copper sulfate also so if we want to find out the mass of copper sulfate what we are going to do is that here the third part it says that mass of crucible and content at the end of the experiment now what is left inside the crucible is copper sulfate because water part of the copper sulfate hydrated copper sulfate has evaporated out so what is left is only copper sulfate in the crucible so if we want to find out the mass of copper sulfate we need to subtract the first and the last value to find out the mass of only copper sulfate so subtracting that we have 17.94 minus 13.60 and that is going to give us the value of 4.34 gram so this is the mass of copper sulfate now we need to find out the moles of water and moles of copper sulfate so moles of copper sulfate is equal to the mass of copper sulfate divided by its molecular mass and molecular mass of copper sulfate is 159.6 and the answer for this is 0.02719 so that is the moles of copper sulfate and moles of water we need to find out by dividing the mass of water that is 3.15 gram by its molecular mass which is 18 and here we get the answer as 0.175 moles so both of this are moles now if we find out the ratio of both these uh, values so x is equal to the ratio of these values that is 0.175 divide by 0.02719 which is equal to 6.44 so if this is the value we write here 6.44 we can round up it to 6 but let us leave here as the our original answer so if we go ahead with the next part it says that suggest why the experimental value of x varies from the expected value of 5 if you are unable to obtain an answer to e1 use the experimental value of x is equal to 6.9 this is not the correct answer now our value is 6.44 and what they are asking is that the expected value of x is 5 
but here we have a value of 6.44 now that shows that the water lost is much greater than what it was expected that's why the value of x is greater now here water if is only 5 moles as compared to the moles of copper sulfate then there must be some copper sulfate which has decomposed and that's the value uh, that's the reason that why x has gone above 5 so we can say that the copper sulfate may have decomposed may have decomposed decomposed or we can also say that there were some impurities there were some impurities which has decomposed some impurities which have decomposed so that you can write any one of the reason or you can add any more reason which specifies or justifies the value of x being greater than 5 so any any such reason is acceptable one of the two common reason are discussed here with you the next part says the empty crucible weighs 13.60 gram calculate the percentage error in this measurement and show your working to find the percentage error of any reading now this is the reading of the weighing balance now here we can see that it is still two decimal places two decimal places is used here so for a balance the maximum error for a balance reading is 0 0.005 gram because that is the reading of the third decimal place which our balance cannot read because our balance is reading till two decimal places so the third decimal place cannot be read by our balance and that's the reason that 0 0.005 gram is the maximum error of our balance so for the reading 3.60 what is the maximum error of the reading now this was for balance okay now for reading if we think about 13.60 we have used a balance twice for finding out the mass uh, difference or the reading which we have used for our calculation of x we have always used the reading that is weighing balance twice and we subtracted the readings so if we have used the balance twice to find out any reading we need to multiply 2 with the maximum error so that's what we are doing here and so that is uh, how to calculate the maximum error so this gives us the answer as 0 0.01 fine now to how to calculate the percentage error of our reading which is 13.60 so what we are going to do is 0 0.01 divided by our reading that is 13.60 gram multiply by 100 that uh, will give us the percentage error and this is answer for this is 0 0.075 7 sorry 735 percentage so the answer is you can always rub I'll, I'll rewrite it 0 0.0735 because this is not the acceptable method of writing so 0 0.0735 percentage is the maximum percentage error of our reading now always remember how to calculate the percentage error if a reading of any instrument any apparatus if it reads one decimal place one decimal place then the maximum error for that apparatus is 0 0.05 yeah because it cannot read the second decimal place so you need to use the half of that that is 0 0.05 if our instrument is two des reading to two decimal places for our reading then the maximum error is 0 0.005 and if any instrument reads till three decimal places then the maximum error is 0 0.0005 now remember 
for our reading if we are using that instrument or the apparatus twice because at times as we have seen here we have found out the subtraction the main uh, mass by subtracting two of the readings so if initial and final mass such are used for example here in balance or in buret reading then multiply this maximum error by 2 as we have done here and then whatever answer we get divide that maximum error by the reading which we have used for our calculation and then multiply by 100 that is the method of calculating percentage error of any instrument or apparatus so this is a common method so here is our question one done for our question paper 5-2 of the exam series Feb-March 2022. In the next video we will discuss question 2 here.